Today I'm going to demonstrate use of the STAT tool on Archer. STAT is designed to help debugging programs which have a deadlock or a hanging problem where they run for a certain amount of time, they don't crash, but they don't finish, they don't run to completion. And this can be common when developing MPI codes, for instance. It is possible to try and address and investigate some of these issues using normal debuggers like DDT we have on Archer or GDB but it can be a bit time consuming you may have to rebuild your code with optimization turned off maybe and, and, and debugging flags turned on and then run the code in the deep, inside the debugger until it gets to a point where it looks like it's not progressing any further running the code inside the debugger itself may take it longer to run and then if you're trying to investigate problems that you only encounter at very large scale so using thousands of cores it can be impractical using debuggers. STAT is designed to address this by letting you run your program without modification, run it to a point when you think it's, it's deadlocked, so run it normally to a point you think it's deadlocked and then you launch the STAT tool which goes and, and finds out where all the processes you're running your program have got to Collect, collates that data for you and lets you view it so you can see a call tree of where all the processes are at and where processes are all in the same location it can collapse that data down so it's much easier to to view. So to demonstrate this I'm using uh, an Archer system, it's not the main Archer system but it's, it's a, a testing uh, development, a training development system which is a much smaller version of Archer uh, the only reason I'm using this is actually it's, it's much quicker to get interactive access uh, on this system which is which is required to run the stat tool so to, to let me run this demo this using the, the TDS system is much much easier but everything I'm doing in here is, is valid on Archer because they have the same software environments and same hardware so I have a program which does deadlock it's an MPI program I've had some problems with it it's deadlocked so I, I now want to go and see where it's deadlocked so I can then go back and look at well, what, what problems have I put in there how can I fix it so I'm going to run an interactive job on this system so I'm going to use a QSUB the minus IV for interactive I'm going to run using 22 nodes it's got a wall time of half an hour shouldn't need all that long. So I'm going to run an interactive job and that, because I'm on this test system there's not many people on it I can get my interactive job start quite quickly and my interactive set console has now come up and I'm now on the job launcher node. I'm going to go to the directory of the, of the executable and the, the data where I have my problem and all I need to do to run and use stat in the first instance is to load the module. So I've loaded stat and now I can just run my job as I normally would. I haven't recompiled it, I haven't changed how it's compiled, it's, it's just been built in the same way. It happens that this program was built with the Intel compilers, minus two optimization but minus O2 optimization but that doesn't matter I should just be able to run this now but it is important that you run it in the background so you put this and sign at the end here so that when the program starts to run I still have access to the console now we can see the programs running and it's printing out some information and it will actually this program will take five or six minutes before it gets to a point where it's deadlocked because I know if this program's running it should start printing stuff out after five or six minutes and, and it's not doing that so I've got to wait until it gets to a point where it's deadlocked before I launch the stat, the stat tool. The other thing I will need is to find out the, the ID of the process which is running my program so if I do this PS minus U and then my username which happens to be Adrian J it will tell me all the processes that I'm running inside this, this shell inside this command line and you can see here that uh, I've got a, a bash process which we can ignore but there are two AP run processes 
and then the the ID of the thing the PS thing I just ran there so we can ignore that as well so it's a two AP run process I'm interested in these are the things which have launched my job and these are the things that stat needs to know about so when I run the stat tool I'm going to give it the value of the first AP run load process in that list so that's a value two zero seven seven eight you know these numbers change every time you run your program but it's you're always looking for the first AP run command in the PS list that you've printed out and then you give that to start so I'm going to pause the video for, for, for the five or six minutes it's going to take for this to run to the point uh, where it deadlocks and then resume when I'm, I'm sure it's deadlocked and I can show you what you do once, once you get to that point Okay, well now I know it's got to a point where it's deadlocked because it's starting printing numbers out but then stopped. It should have continued. So I'm now going to launch the stats tool to try and collect the data about where all the processes are that are running this. So you can see that I've run it on 512 processes. So it's going to go and query those 512 processes and work out what routines they're in and then collect that data for me in such a way that I can view it. So as I mentioned before, the first thing you need to use is this ps command to find the process ID of the ap run command you use. So I can see here that it's still 20778. So now I'll we'll simply type stat, all capital letters, and that ID 20778. And stat should go off and do its work now. So it's telling me it's doing some things and it's written some results back for me. Now what I can do is I can kill that AP run job I had and I can stop it because I know it's not going anywhere, it's broken. And I can exit this interactive session. So I, I've now left the job launcher node and I, I don't have any um, jobs queued on the machine, running on the machine, and I'm actually it turns out in the same directory as where I was running that job. So if we have a look in this directory now, we can see that what's been created in this directory for us is a directory called stat underscore, underscore results. So if we go in there, we can see it's also got another directory inside it called app deadlock. Dot zero 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 zero. The reason this is called app deadlock is because I called my executable app deadlock. So if you are running a different executable, this directory would have a different name. If I go into that, then we can see there's a number of files in here. Again, they're named after the executable I ran. Um, but the one I'm going to be, I'm interested in, is the dot three d dot dot file. So this one here, app deadlock zero 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 three d dot so here on the, the login nodes, I've got to make sure I have the stat module loaded as well. And then I can just use this command called stat view and pass it the name of that file, the 3D dot dot file. And we can now see that stat view, I'll make this window a little bit bigger. Stat view has produced a nice pretty picture showing me what's going on here. So, so this is a call tree of my program where everything's going on. But the important thing to see here actually is that each function has a number associated with it. So if I look, if I if I have a look in here, if I zoom in to this here, it can see we can see that I ran on 512 processes, but we can see that. For this branch down here, this main program, 511 processes, so process 1 to 511 are in here, and they, they may be doing different things in here, but this is where they're all at. And we can see that ultimately, of these 512 processes, um, a lot of them here are sitting in routines which are called by the MPI library. Apologies for that. So all these MPI D underscore and GNI underscore and things, these are all MPI library routines. If you look slightly 
higher up from there, we, what we can actually see is we've got some programs, some sorry processes. Uh, let's have a look in here. So we've got a broadcast going on here. Okay, and we've got another broadcast going on here, and then we've got a wait all over here and an I receive over here. So actually, what I can see from this 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 call stack here is that all but one of my processes have gone on and are actually sitting waiting in a, a broadcast. Actually, they, they, they are sitting over here waiting in a broadcast. Now, a broadcast um, is a collective communication, so it's likely we need all of them to be in there, and it doesn't look like they're all in there, so there may be some problems there. And then I can see over this side here that I've got one process, process zero, zero which is actually sitting in a wait all, waiting to do something. So it's called an I receive and it's sitting in a wait all. Okay, so what I can see from this probably is that I haven't matched up my sends and receives in my MPI library very well. I can see where the particular wait all is coming from. It's coming from a routine up here. And I can then go back to my source code and look well, what should process zero be doing in this case? Who, it, Which process is it, is it waiting for? And that basically is what Stats will give you. It doesn't tell you how to fix the program, what the, but it will show you where processes are spending their time and where they're sitting waiting. And actually, in this case, this did let me go off and fix it. I could identify that actually I hadn't really specified the, my number of send and receives correctly. I went away and did that, and, and that caused that fixed my problem, and now the program runs fine. There is more documentation uh, on the Archer website on STAT. Now, STAT is a tool that's not developed by us or Cray. I think it's, it's from a US university. I can't remember which one. Um, but uh, it, it's there, and, and, and you can go and have a look at that. And as I say, it's available on the main machine for you to use on a number of processes.